1932, Germany. Politicians attempt to hold a fragile liberal government together and stem the rising tide of fascism. Led from the shadows by evil incarnate, sporting a toothbrush moustache. Some of these fascists have even infiltrated the liberal government. Their objective? To enact fascist policies and put the Führer in power. While the liberals must attempt to identify their allies and enemies as they pass policies of their own. Or, even better, assassinate the fascist leader. Willkommen to Secret Hitler. Select the appropriate fascist track based on the number of players and place it face up in the middle of the table, next to the liberal track. Shuffle all 11 fascist policy tiles and 6 liberal policy tiles together into one face-down stack. Refer to the player count chart in the rulebook to determine how many liberal and fascist roll cards to play with, returning the unused cards to the box. Pair each card with the corresponding party membership card, as well as pairing the Hitler card with a fascist party card, of course. And pack each pair of cards into its own envelope, along with a Ja und Nein ballot card. Shuffle the envelopes until you cannot remember the contents of any of them in specific, then give one to each player. Each player then privately examines the contents of their envelope. Once everyone knows their role and party affiliation, randomly select the first presidential candidate and give them the president and chancellor placards. Then, using either the Secret Hitler app or a player who is good at memorizing instructions to facilitate, do the following. Everyone closes their eyes. In a game of five or six players, the lone fascist and Hitler open their eyes to identify each other, then close their eyes again. In a game of seven to ten players, only the fascists open their eyes, not Hitler, to identify each other, and Hitler raises a thumb to reveal himself to the rest of his party. The fascists close their eyes, Hitler lowers his thumb, and then everyone can open their eyes again. Gameplay consists of several rounds, including an election, a legislative session, and an executive action. Except on the very first round, start by passing the president placard clockwise to the next player, who is the next presidential candidate. The presidential candidate then nominates another player to, in the event of their election, serve as their chancellor by passing them the chancellor placard. Note that the most recently elected president and chancellor are term limited and therefore ineligible to serve as chancellor this round. This does not apply to the last nominees, if they lost their election, but to the last pair elected. And when five or fewer players remain, term limits only apply to the last elected chancellor, not the last elected president. Once a candidate for chancellor has been chosen, all players may discuss the nominees until all are ready to vote. All players, including the candidates, must cast a Ja or Nein ballot, all to be revealed simultaneously and publicly. If the number of nines is less than or equal to the number of ja's, the vote fails, and the round ends by advancing the election tracker one space. If three elections in a row are rejected, the country is thrown into chaos. The top policy card on the policy deck is enacted immediately, and term limits are cleared. A new round begins by passing the presidential placard to the next player. If, however, there are more yas than nines, the vote succeeds and the candidates are elected. If there are three or more fascist policies enacted and the newly elected chancellor is Hitler, the game ends and the fascists win. <laughs> Otherwise, play continues and the players know this chancellor is not Hitler. During the legislative session, the president and chancellor work together in secret to enact a new policy. The president draws the top three tiles of the policy deck, looks at them in secret, and discards one in a face-down discard pile. The remaining two tiles are passed to the chancellor at the same time, who looks at them in secret, discards one, and enacts the other by placing it face up on the next available space on the appropriate track. If that fills the track, the game ends, and that party is the winner. 
The President and Chancellor are forbidden to communicate to each other by any means during this process. And they must deliberately choose the policy tiles they are discarding, not shuffle and blindly select one at random. If at any point there are three or fewer policy tiles remaining in the stack, shuffle them with the discard pile to refill. If a fascist policy is enacted, which covers a presidential power, the sitting president may use that power during the following executive action. The investigate loyalty power allows the president to privately view the party membership card of any player. Be careful not to show your roll card if you are the subject of an investigate loyalty power, only your party loyalty card. The call special election power allows the president to choose who the next presidential candidate will be, rather than simply passing the placard to the left. Term limits do not apply here. The policy peak power allows the president to look at the top three policies and put them back in any order they choose. The execution power allows the president to eliminate one player from the game by saying, I formally execute this player. If the player is Hitler, the game ends and the liberals win. If not, the player is removed from the game as play continues. They may not speak, vote or run for office. They are dead. The veto power comes into effect for all legislative sessions after the fifth fascist policy is enacted. Upon receiving the two remaining policy tiles, the chancellor may say, I wish to veto this agenda. If the president agrees to the veto, both policies are discarded. A veto is a sign of an inactive government, however, and thus advances the election tracker one space. Afterwards, a new round begins. And before you go, there is one thing to keep in mind. Secret Hitler is a game of social deduction. As such, you are allowed and encouraged to lie whenever it suits your agenda. You are permitted to lie at almost all times. The only exceptions to this rule are if you are assassinated as Hitler or if you are elected chancellor as Hitler once three or more fascist policies have been enacted, as either instance ends the game. And that is how you play Secret Hitler. Hey, my name's Kyle McCarley. I'm a voice actor by trade, but board games are one of my favorite hobbies. If you like board games, you should check out The Board and Barrel every Friday night at 7.30 Pacific on twitch.tv slash Kyle McCarley, where me and my buddies play board games. We also give you guys a chance to help us or hurt us, depending on how you feel, with our buff and nerf house rules. And we have virtual bingo cards you can fill out while you're watching the show. It's a good time. Hope to see you there.